Anyway, I am Stephen uh, on this nice New York afternoon, and I would like to introduce you. I'm going to play the cello, as I often do. It's a bad habit I've acquired over the years. And we have now our regular pianist for this series, Mr. Jeremy Denk, playing the piano. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Um, but he's, he's a good lad. He has a famous musical blog in which um, he writes some good stuff and some bad stuff. We've had arguments on his blog, but he's a good lad. He's a good lad. And now we have a new person to join us today, who is David Garrison, who is a famous actor. And he's going to be reading from one of my books, and he's well qualified to read my writings because his parents come from England, from unpronounceable villages in a little county called Kent. Um, so he's really an Englishman. He may not sound like it. You know? He doesn't really have a proper accent. But he's second generation English, so I will allow him to read from my book. And he's going to read the chapter about our hero this afternoon, who is Franz Joseph Haydn. Now, I hope you're all well dressed, because not only is it Mother's Day, but we're off to a little house just outside Vienna, Austria, to meet an old gentleman who sets great store by cleanliness and tidiness. We will be met by a smiling housekeeper. She'll make us wait while she introduces us before ushering us into the room, the small room where the old gentleman is. Here is the old gentleman sitting in an armchair wearing a powdered wig with curls shaped like eclairs covering his ears. In fact, we've heard little panic-struck noises from inside the room while we were waiting because he must get that wig on before he sees any visitors. He welcomes us with a toothless, well, almost toothless smile. Such a charming smile, despite the lack of molars, that it brings a rush of warmth to our hearts. We mustn't get carried away, however, I should like to tell you, as a famous French violinist did, he gave the old man such a fierce hug that he almost knocked out the two remaining teeth. But where are my manners? I do apologize. Time for introductions. The elderly gentleman whom I would like you to meet is the famous Austrian composer Franz Joseph Haydn. And Dr. Haydn, I'd like you to meet, what's your name? Hannah? Hannah and all the other lovely people here at the 92nd Street Y. Joseph Haydn, uh, forget the Franz bit, isn't exactly a beauty. He never has been. He's rather small, with short legs, a pockmarked face, and his nose is a bit too big for its own good. And inside, he has an unfortunate growth, a nasal polyp, that distorts the shape of one of his nostrils and makes breathing uncomfortable for him. He was going to have it operated on once by a famous surgeon in London. Uh, this was before the days of anesthetics, so several strong men were hired to hold Haydn down in a chair while the surgeon did his stuff. Haydn was so terrified that he started screaming and struggling and wouldn't stop. Eventually, the surgeon just gave up in disgust. And personally, I don't blame Haydn one little bit. Do you? But for all his seeming faults in his appearance, Haydn looks lovely because he has such a kind, good-humored expression. No wonder that everybody, well, practically everybody, adores him. Haydn likes children. In fact, his housekeeper often brings in local children to the house to play in front of the old man because it gives him such pleasure to watch. So it probably won't be long before he tells you to call him Papa Haydn. Most people, adults or children, call him that. 